A long time ago, someone thought of designing Detroit after Paris. Detroit once was called the City Beautiful. It is now called the murder capital of the United States. Of the 10 biggest cities, Detroit has the highest per capita homicide rate. Last month was the worst for killings in the history of Detroit. There were 89 homicides, one for every dot on the map. 90% involved blacks killing blacks and whites killing whites. Most of the victims and killers were men and boys. One of the killings took place here near a high school. On April 25th, at this bus stop, one boy, 15 years old, shot and killed a 17-year-old boy with a revolver. On April 23rd, two brothers playing cards began to fight. Their mother tried to intervene, and in the scuffle, she was shot dead. On April 19th, a man and his wife had words. She stabbed him. He died two hours later. In other crimes of violence also, Detroit is among the statistical leaders in robbery, assault, and rape. New Yorkers are sometimes called blasé. This shooting in downtown Detroit was dramatic, but it attracted a small audience. As in many other cities, the central business district is not what it used to be. Some people describe it harshly as a zone of decay. At any rate, business has declined, with much of the commerce fleeing to the suburbs. The old major hotels are said to be attracting fewer clients. One department store cut back its downtown selling space. Another announced it will close its downtown branch. First-run movie houses folded one after another. And now there is none downtown. However, on the southern rim of the central business district, a prosperous convention complex has been developed. And there are plans to add to it. It is a self-contained area for visitors, with auditoriums, stores, restaurants, and hotel accommodations. There is no need for visitors to leave the area. In fact, some people in Detroit advise against it. The result is a sort of convention ghetto, but it's convenient, comfortable, and lively. At dusk outside in downtown Detroit, the streets already are almost empty. It is no exaggeration to say that many people are afraid to be out on the streets at night. Detroiters know about their own city's reputation. The homicide rate has gone up during good times and bad, when there was racial tension and when there was not, when other crimes increased or decreased. Homicide is a growth industry. In 10 years, the homicide toll increased five and a half times. Last year, the number of victims was 751. In recent years, homicides have been rising in the city of Detroit. For 1971, 72, and 73, almost every category of crime in the city of Detroit declined for three straight years, with the exception of homicide, and that has continued to climb year after year. But that's not a problem that's unique to Detroit. Uh, 
it's a problem that I am personally convinced that uh, the entire state of Michigan has, as do most of the other major urban areas in the United States. The fear of physical harm is evident in many ways. For example, this store's bulletproof shield runs from counter to ceiling. It's not peculiar to Detroit. And this suburban housing area with its fortress-like walls is planned to provide security for its residents. A toll gate screens out strangers trying to enter. However, as far as homicides are concerned, the major threat is not from strangers. Most of the homicide victims are friends, relatives, and acquaintances. And they are killed as a result of some type of emotionally violent argument. And I can give you example after example of that. Mother shot her son uh, because, uh, well, to get specific, she had a, an emotionally violent argument with her 17-year-old son. He ran out the kitchen door. She was so upset, she grabbed a pistol out of the kitchen drawer and started shooting at him. The 14-year-old, who idolized his older brother, stepped in between and she killed the 14-year-old. Never hit the 17-year-old. Now, that's first-degree murder. A wife became apprehensive because she heard some noises at the front door, fired through the front door, and killed her husband. Now, that's manslaughter. And uh, probably the worst extreme, uh, not too long ago, uh, and I'll change the names, but Lisa uh, shot and killed Kevin. She obtained her father's pistol out of the bedroom dresser drawer, and they were playing with it. Lisa was three, and Kevin was one and a half. This was a boy killed accidentally while he and his friends were playing with a gun. The other boys tried to hide the body. These police photographs illustrate the most common stories of homicide, a friendship, a marriage, a blood relationship, ending in a short burst of rage. There were two men in the life of a woman who lived here. On April 28th, one of them, a friend, came to visit while she was out. Shortly afterward, her husband arrived with a gun. There was a fight upstairs, and the friend was killed. The husband was arrested, but it was for her friend that the woman grieved. Homicides today are linked to the rioting, burning, and looting in July 1967. Of the 53 people who were killed in Detroit that month, 43 were victims of the turmoil. For both races, the violence produced thoughts of self-preservation. The new fears brought on a wave of gun buying. Many guns were bought legally with registrations and permits. Many more were acquired illegally. The entire city became an arsenal. What is the estimate on the number of uh, handguns here in, in the city of Detroit? In the city of Detroit? Yes. Oh, the conservatively, uh, probably a half a million. That's uh, about one for every three persons. That's right, or almost one for every household. Um, and it's evident for example, in one of our very nice residential districts inside the city of Detroit, they had seven burglaries not too long ago. And in those seven burglaries, they obtained 14 pistols. Uh, and there are fences in the city of Detroit we have gotten information on uh, where they have put out the word, so-called word, that they won't buy anything but pistols. They don't want any televisions or stereos or radios or anything else. They only want firearms. Each year, the Detroit Police Department confiscates about 30,000 firearms used in crimes. They include handguns of every description. We have German Lugers, Derringers, 
small revolvers, magnums. Some of these Saturday night specials are small. They can be palmed in your hand. I understand you own a gun yourself. Uh, why, why do you? Partially because I guess I've always had a gun. I was uh, an officer in the infantry for a while in World War II and was a gunnery instructor. And so you might say that I'm a gun buff, but over and above that, I've always believed in having a gun in my home. I have several guns. N not carrying it on your person, but... No. I, I haven't shot a gun, I might add, since World War II. But I do have guns. But in addition to being a gun buff, it's for protection also. Of course. Yeah. Well, I don't own a gun. I don't have a gun in the house. I don't carry a gun. And the reason I don't is be because it means I would intend to use it if I carried it or had one, or ne felt that that insecure in my uh, life that I felt I had that one. I don't want my kids to learn how to use a gun. I don't care if they never learn how to use a gun. I don't want them going to service. As a matter of fact, I'd much rather have my kids go watch a good pornographic flick than to learn how to shoot a gun. We do about uh, about roughly 5,000 uh, stabs, gunshot wounds a, a year in our emergency department. Uh, that represents about one third of our injury and accident cases, maybe, maybe close to one half. Prior to 67, we were seeing many more stabbings than we were gunshot wounds. And then after uh, 67, they started to reverse. And about in 68, we were seeing more more than 50% of our uh, wound cases were uh, gunshot wounds. Uh, and as time has progressed, the number of high-velocity pistol wounds and high-velocity gunshot uh, shotgun wounds and rifle wounds has increased as well. The, the ratio has increased. The emotional conflict-motivated homicide is a, almost impossible for us to police. I cannot put a policeman in every bedroom or every kitchen throughout the city of Detroit. I am told by psychiatrists that if the pistol were not available, the time span in which the emotion is that high is very, very short. And that if there had not been that readily available, extremely deadly weapon, they'd have passed over that moment of extreme anger and there probably never would have been a homicide, maybe a black eye. I think there's a real fear of crime. I think in many guns are historically in homes. Uh, Detroit is a city uh, mainly of immigrants, uh, both black and white. Uh, its most recent immigrants, black and white, come from the South, uh, where the carrying of weapons is a pretty common thing. The city is occupied by transient displaced persons, sometimes hostile, often armed. On April 24th, a man tried a reconciliation with his wife. She killed him with a rifle. On April 15th, another man attempted to see his estranged wife. The way he did it, she said, was to break down the back door and to threaten her life. She killed him with a revolver. On April 6th, a man was shot and killed by his father. The son was 55, the father, 91. On April 28th, on the east side of Detroit, two men were drinking at a neighborhood bar. Strong words led to a show of arms, and one of them was shot dead. Home folks think I'm big in Detroit City. From the letters that I write, they think I'm fine. But by day I make the cards, by night I make the bars. If only they could read between the lines, I want to go. 